Hello everyone, my name is Rose Romandi from Perfected by Blood Ministries and I'm really excited to be here with you today because we are going to talk about chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want to invite you to subscribe because we are going through the new series called the book of Revelation chapter by chapter teaching basically on the book of Revelation. And also before we start and jump right into our study for today, I want to invite you to um, click on the link below this video and just subscribe to our mailing list, receive a free ebook that helps you to understand and study the Bible better. All right, so let's get to it. So we are in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. And honestly, um, this was really challenging for me to record the video on chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. And I was praying and talking to the Lord, not because this is the hard chapter to talk about, it's the most wonderful and easiest chapter. But the reason it was hard for me is because I remembered what happened to me personally when I was a brand new Christian and someone was teaching from chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. And let me share you share that story to you and um, so that you can understand why it was really hard for me because there is so much false doctrines out there on chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. It's the heart of the message. It's the heart of the book of Revelation. And um, almost every doctrine about the demons, one third of the angels, the coming of Jesus, the beast, and all this stuff out there that are so, so far away from the truth of the gospel, it, it comes from the chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, mostly. So that's why it was a little, um, you know, I was just praying and asking the Lord, you know, maybe should, I should give this to Masood to record it. And I really felt like, no, this is, I need to, I need to do this because something happened to me. Um, and, and I think many of you probably will, you know, can relate to that and can relate to basically what happened to me. So we became a Christian in uh, February 2012. And, you know, as a Muslim, we didn't care about uh, like who says what, okay? We got desperate and we really wanted to find the truth. And we started reading every book that we could find that who tell us who God is and what is the truth. So of course, obviously as a Muslim, we started reading the Islam book and somebody gave us the Bible and we started reading the Bible. Long story short, we have our testimony in our YouTube channel. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. But the thing is, we found Jesus and our life was changed. I mean, like upside down, we found the truth and, and we encounter and we realized that this truth is Jesus. Uh, it's a person. So we started spending time with the Lord and now we are new to Christianity. Obviously, we, we need some teachings. Even though the reason we became a Christian, it was because we read the Bible. We are like, okay, so we are baby Christians and we need to be taught and all those amazing things. So we ended up of course, YouTube is usually the first place that you go to see what's out there and what people are saying and what kind of teachings out there. So a few months later, I think it was around July or August of the same year, or June, July probably, that, you know, like, we, we, like we were in the clouds, you know, living in a different world. And, and all of a sudden, Mas I came home and Masood told me, you know, you need, we need to watch this. How come we didn't know about this? So we sat down and there was this video from this guy. And honestly, I don't know who he was and what was the channel. I don't remember anything. All, all I remember that he was going through the book of Revelation and showing us that how the signs of the end times are drawing close and it's the end of the world is coming. Now imagine, I'm a Christian, I just became a Christian. I just found hope in my life. I just, I was just got to a place in my life that I was excited to live for the first time in my life. I'm excited to live the life because I found someone that I can live with and that's Jesus. And all of a sudden this guy is talking about like end time and, and um, it, was, uh, it wasn't easy on me to hear those things, but because I came with the attitude of, I wanna know the truth even though it might hurt, um, I didn't care. I was like, okay, so if this is the truth, so let it be. So we ended up watching and he went to the chapter 12 
of the book of Revelation, which I'm going to talk to you today. In chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, he started, he has, he bought this software. He went all the way back to 2000 years ago, came forward and show us how the moon and the star, they are gonna line up for this shaping a woman, the star on the head, the moon on the, under the feet and all the things. And, and then he said, according to what I'm saying, what you are seeing in chapter 12 is going to happen in September 2012. So my first reaction was like, yes, you know, I'm so happy we are the last to enter. And at least we came to a place of knowing Jesus before the world ends, right? And Masood and I, we were talking together. We are like, we are so lucky that, uh, you know, we didn't become a Christian. We, did, we became a Christian before the world ends. And, and honestly, uh, so it was, I was like, and something hit me um, sometimes later. And I was like, what if, if we had become, if we, if the end of the world was in 2010, what if the end of the world was in 2012, 2011, right before I became a Christian? And what if it was the end of 2011, because we became Christian in February, 2012, what if? It was the day before we became a Christian. That's not fair because if we had just, we had more time, we could come to a place of receiving Jesus. And all of a sudden in that moment, I realized that, wait a minute, I ran, this is what happened to me. I'm sorry, because it's really heart touching. And I wanna say those doctrines that are talking about the coming of Jesus in the flesh one day, out there, outside of the outside of you, it's it hurts. It doesn't edify. It doesn't give life. You wait and wait and wait, and nothing happens for the hope that you want to have one day to Jesus to come. So I ran to the room and I said, and I said, Lord, uh, you know, I was lucky. September is going to be end of the world according to this teaching and I was lucky. What about my family? What about the people I love? What about the country I came from? 99% of people I know around me, they don't know you. So what about them? That's not fair. They just need to have some time. What if their time is in the next five years or three years? Please, Jesus, don't come. And I prayed that from my heart, genuinely from the, you know, because I loved and I cared about them. And what I didn't understand at the time, it was that I didn't realize that I could never be more compassionate than Jesus. Don't you think that he has already thought about these things? What if the end of the world was 2011? He wanted to come in 2011 and he knew Masood and Rose are going to believe in 2012. And then how could I stand in front of him and say what? You know, like what is he gonna tell me anyways at that moment? So what I'm trying to say is um, we ended up, uh, my husband and I, we ended up, um, you know, saying, you know, we came from a religion that we believe everything they told us. And we never uh, studied it, we never, um, found out for ourselves. Now, how much more now that I have the spirit of truth, a spirit of Jesus that can lead me to all truth, how much more that I can find the truth for myself? So we ended up, of course, you know, unfortunately, um, um, we believe that 2000, uh, September 2012 is the end of the world because according to Revelation chapter 12, all the stars is gonna line up and everything. and and uh, we ended up talking to people about it. It just, we, in the next two years, we believed in all these false teachings about the end times until the Lord, uh, you know, started revealing to us the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, we, 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 we lost a very close friend of us. They had just come from Iran to Canada and we were like 15 years of friends with them. And they came and they found us Christians, brand new Christian, like actually they came a few months before we became a Christian. And all of a sudden in the middle, we became a Christian and we started telling them the world is ending. And I remember he said, what are you talking about? I just came from Iran. I wanna build my family here in this country. And now you're telling me the world is ending. And 
it turned it was it was ugly it was really bad and unfortunately he didn't want to continue our his friendship with us and we ended up you know to, yesterday we were talking Masood and I we were talking together and we are like okay you know what kind of a good news did we give <laughs> I mean what kind of a good news it is to say Jesus is coming back in that understanding of the fleshly way of thinking that he's going to come back in the clouds one day and destroy the what kind of a good news it is in that honestly I just want you to ask the question we are called to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and now I am teaching Revelation chapter 12 today and I really felt the Lord is leading me to to talk about this chapter here because what you are going to see and understand today in this chapter it gives you such wisdom such power and such love for Jesus to empower things in your life and that's the message of the book of Revelation if you if this is the first video that you are watching and you haven't watched the other chapters in this series I want to encourage you to go and watch them because I'm not going to lay down the foundation again in this video and I might say stuff that we already covered it in the other videos so that's why uh, you know the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ is revealing to you who Jesus Christ is can you just put in the comments who is Jesus Christ can you give a couple of names of this Jesus Christ he said I am the truth I am the life I am the way I am the shepherd I am the you know I am your friend the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek he is uh, the, in the book of Revelation I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end I am the one who is and he was and he who is to come I am the one who has the keys of death and Hades I am the one I mean this is the revelation of Jesus Christ who he really is what is he thinking what is his heart how what did he do on the cross and what is he doing right now and how is he working in your life as the church as the body of Christ so you come to that realization of who you are rise up in your identity and overcome and inherit all things beginning of the book of Revelation talks about overcoming end of the book of Revelation talks about overcoming so it is the message of the overcoming of the church because something happened and someone has done something and that's the lamb of God so now let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and I want you to read the first verse and pay attention to a few words that it says it says now a great sign appeared in heaven so do you see this circle the word sign here it's a sign we already have the video we already covered it uh, multiple times in our YouTube channel that when we are talking about signs that means you are using a language to give a message to give a message out of that language it's just the pointing to something else and Jesus the Pharisees and you know Sadducees they came to Jesus and they asked Jesus um, how uh, give us a sign from heaven do you see here it says now there is a sign from heaven so G they told Jesus give us a sign from heaven and in the book of Revelation we see there was a sign from heaven but if you go and read that verse which I'm not gonna cover the sign because it's not the video about the sign okay I'm gonna leave the link for you um, to watch after this video watch the sign video that we we talked about it but Jesus said the adulterous and the wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign but no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah do you remember no sign God will ever give anyone except the sign of prophet Jonah as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights so the son of man must be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights what do you see what was the sign of the prophet Jonah it was the sign of the death and the resurrection of Jesus so that's the only sign that God has given to the world because that's the only thing you need to know and that's the only thing you need to understand what really happened because he did it all for you why he did it 
um, what happened on the cross. What is it going like? What what happened the seven hours on the cross? What happened the at the death? What happened in the burial at the resurrection? And this is the perfected Bible channel. We reveal the mysteries of Christ in three days and three nights at the death and resurrection of Jesus. So this is what our channel is all about, and this is what the Book of Revelation is all about. So now. Therefore, here it says, there was a great sign from heaven. So whatever that you're going to read going forward, it must, you must see Jesus Christ. You must see the death and resurrection of the Christ. Which Christ? Are we talking about Jesus of Nazareth that is coming, that came 2,000 years ago in the flesh? Yes. But... You shouldn't have stopped there because whoever he is and whatever he's done, it's who you are and it must happen to you. Okay, let me repeat it this. Whoever Jesus Christ is, is who you are. He didn't come to tell you who he is and boast about the identity he has. He doesn't need to prove anything to you and I. He came to show who we are to show our identity. Whoever he is, is who you are. Whatever place he's standing, you're supposed to stand. Whatever spirit he has, you must have. Whatever mind he has, you must have. Whatever position he has, you must have it. So he, Jesus Christ came to show us who we are. So when we look at him, all of a sudden we realize, oh, that's who I am. So that's why here it says, okay, so this sign appeared in heaven. So what are we seeing? At the revelation, this sign must reveal to us Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the head and the body. The Christ, he has the head and the body. The head of the Christ is Jesus. The body of the Christ is you and I. So we are one together. So at the revelation of Jesus Christ, you be, it becomes revealed to you who you are and you stand in that position and know your right and your identity. So that's why here it says, okay, so when we are talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ, we are talking about the revelation of the mystery of the union and the oneness of the head and the body together. We are talking about the, when the body comes to a place of saying the same thing as head says. Okay, so now here says the sign appeared in heaven. So let's read verse 1 in Revelation chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. So first of all, we need to see that, okay, if it's the sign, it's, it's not... It, it is giving a message to us. The message is not, is not finding them in the star somewhere. It's understanding what is really happening, revealing Jesus Christ through these things. So therefore, so here it says, okay, so it's explaining to us with details. Have you noticed that, um, you know, what makes you to see clear are the details that you see? In the natural realm, in our eyes, if, for example, in my background for you is blurry right now, okay? You don't see much details. For example, you can't read what is written on that basically picture there on my, in the background. So, but if you start seeing details of, of, of what is written on that picture, on the frame there, or what, what's, what color it is, what the background is, that's when it helps you to see clear. But now you can take a look at it, look at this picture behind me here, and you can say, well, I, I know there's a frame or there's something written on it, but I can't see it. So details are, made, are the, one of the major facts to see detail, to see clear. That's why there's so much details that we must see, we must discover in the book of Revelation. Okay, like here is explaining to us there's a woman and it gives the details. So it's painting a picture to us. Okay, 
So now, um, before, you know, let's, um, basically, I can, you know what, I can show you, I can uh, draw quickly, and let's see. All right, so, so hopefully you guys can see my screen here. All right, so the thing is, it says, okay, there is a woman, okay uh that is clothed with sun okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to draw a woman <laughs> okay so and then because it says clothed with sun i'm gonna have this let's say this is the sun okay and then I'm going to go back here. So let's say this is our woman. Okay. And then it says there was um, a moon under, under her feet. So let's talk about this. Let's say this is moon. Okay. And then it's the, a garland of 12 stars. Okay. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So, and then being with a child, she, uh, she cried in labor, in pain to give birth. So this woman that we see here, she is in labor. Okay. So do you see, it says she cried because she was in labor. Basically, she had a baby inside of her okay so this baby it is like she was clothed with sun okay so keep that in mind all right so now and then verse three says and another sign up here guys it's only a sign because it's giving us the message that we need to understand so this dragon i don't sorry guys i hope <laughs> this dragon Okay, um, another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads. Let's say something like this. Um, and seven, uh, um, seven heads, ten horns. Okay, and had um, seven diadems on his head. All right, so I'm going to, I don't know, something like one, two, three let's say something like that all right and his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven so do you see it says this sign is in heaven i'm gonna all of this i'm gonna do this okay and i'm gonna write down here so we know this is happening in heaven okay so the woman is in heaven so now the thing is it says okay his tail this one here had one third of the star, which let's say this, cast into the earth. So let's say here is earth. All right. So now my point here, I just wanted to picture this. And, you know, honestly, there is so much happening in this chapter and every single detail is important. This video is not talking about every details of it. Okay. But this video is helping you to understand, see the picture and really understand what is the main point that chapter 12 is talking about. So now my point here is, look at, look at verse um, 4. He said, drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it is born. So, so the dragon is standing not to devour the woman, to devour the child that the woman is bearing. All right, now look at verse five. It says, she bore a male child. So cross off the word child, put the word son there. So now I'm gonna write here, male son. So she bore a male son. Okay, who was to rule all nations with, the, with a rod of iron and her child was cut up to God and his throne. 
okay? So this child, it came out, and you know what? I'm gonna put it here, just a little higher, and was cut up to the throne. So do you see? Therefore, this child must be, like it says, he's going to, who rules all the nations with the rod. But here's the thing. I want you to see this, that uh, I'm going to bring my, bring it back on the camera here. All right. So let me see if I'm back. Okay. Awesome. So now here's the thing. What I want you to see is this, that um, the son, this woman, bore a son that is ruling with the nations. Now, here's the thing. There are so many um, arguments or teachings out there. Who is this woman and who is this son? And first of all, let me show you that this woman that is talking here, it's not talking about Mary because, because it's very similar to the story of Jesus, okay? But it's not talking about Mary and it's not talking about any other woman. Why? Because in verse 17, it tells us that there, this woman is going to be to have more seeds and this woman is going to have uh, basically, and the dragon is going to basically do the same <laughs> with all the seeds that this woman is going to produce. Look at uh, chapter 12, verse 17. It says, and dragon, was enraged with woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So therefore, who's the seed? Who's the child that is born in the story here? Okay, so the woman gives birth to, to a male child that is going to rule all the nation with the rod of iron and is going to sit on the throne. Do you see this? So, but verse 17 tells us that this, um, uh, the seed or the offspring of the woman are those who keep the commandment of God and testimony of Jesus Christ. So do you see? Who are these people? Those who keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you haven't watched the first couple of videos on this series, please go ahead and watch it because I believe we talked about the testimony of Jesus Christ, but let me show you a couple of scripture. In uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, John tells that, that he's the one that has a testimony of Jesus Christ. Look at this, verse 9. I, John, both your brother and companion, in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patience of, a, patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he says, I am your companion, your brother in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let me ask you, what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? If you ask Jesus, Jesus, share your testimony with us. What do you think he says? He's he actually answered it in verse 18, verse 1, verse 18. I am he who lives, chapter 1, verse 18. I am he who lives and who was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. If you ask Jesus to share your testimony, he says, you know what? I went around, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. I went around teaching the gospel, preaching the good news, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening up the eyes of the blind, and then they crucified me, but God raised me from the dead. So I am the one who was dead, now I alive forevermore. This is the testimony of Jesus. But now, the story of the book of Revelation is for you to have the testimony of Jesus. What does it mean? That means that you're not going to say, well, this Jesus died and rose, even though you're going to say it. But the thing is, Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. That means if I picked up the cross, I went on the cross, you must pick up the cross and go on the cross. If I went on the cross and I, I died, then therefore you must die. If I was resurrected from the dead, then you must be resurrected from the dead. That's why Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, and it says, if we partook of the death of Jesus, we must partake of the resurrection of Jesus. So do you see, Jesus went through the cross 
physically, but now it's our time to understand how, what he did so we partake of that. This is, this is beyond the scope of this teaching about going like following Jesus to the cross and hopefully we will talk about it. But the testimony of those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ, they are the one who followed the lamb. It's talking about you and I. It's talking about the sons of God, talking about, not talking about a Jesus of Nazareth or something, you know, Jesus has finished the race and now we must follow him into his footsteps. So go back to Revel uh, Revelation chapter 12. So these people, basically the woman that is giving birth here is not going to give birth only to one person. Obviously, this woman is giving birth to going to give birth to many others, right? Do you see here? So he went, uh, the dragon went to make war with the seed of the woman who have, who keep the commandment of God. If you have read the, fir the first letter of John, John talked about the commandment. I'm not talking to you about the old commandment or the new command, like uh, it's always been the new commandment and he talked about the commandment a lot. And if you read in the context of first John, the commandment is the commandment of love that comes because you know the truth. Okay. So, so basically what I wanted to show you here before we jump, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you shortly, show you a couple of scriptures to see who this woman is. So basically the picture is this, there is this woman, the woman is with the child, there is a dragon that wants, wants to devour the child. Now, as soon as the child is born, the child is cut up to the throne. And look at verse 7. There is a war that is happening in the heaven. And then the dragon that was in heaven and wanted to devour the son of this woman is cast on earth. All right. Do you see that? From heaven cast on earth. And the woman also went to the wilderness on earth and the dragon is following the woman so that if the woman gives another birth to the same seed, so the dragon can devour the seed. Why? Because the, he knows his time is short. What does it mean? That means he knows that this seed, that this woman is going to give birth again and again, is going to crush the dragon's head off of heaven. I hope you followed what I said. I think you may want to go back because I want to, I don't want to, you know, cut it short for you. I want to give as much as I can. So the dragon knows that the seed of this woman is powerful enough to, uh, to crush the dragon's head from the heavens. We already talk about it hundred times in our YouTube channel about the heaven and earth. And let me tell you, just in case you have forgotten or you haven't watched the videos, that when we talk about the heaven, we talk about the rulership. So heaven is my throne, God says. So it's the place of rulership. Now dragon is in heaven. That means dragon was ruling until the son was born and kick the dragon out of the rulership and took the place so the son can rule. Do you see? The son can rule. So now, so there are so many teachings and so many times and many hours I can go and talk to you about the woman here and we can look at it from multiple ways, from different angles and every angle reveal the beautiful mystery of Jesus Christ. But of course, this video is not talking about all these things that is written in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, but I want to give you one thing to understand what is really happening here. So basically chapter 12 says there is this woman that is in labor, right? It's giving birth. So this is the picture of the chapter 12. The woman give, is giving birth and the focus of chapter 12, it's the woman that gives birth to a seed or son that this son is going to rule the nations. So where do we see in the New Testament that there is a woman in labor? 
where do you hear a test a story of a woman in labor and and here's the thing if you have been following us our teachings in youtube channel you know by now that we believe a scripture a scriptures must interpret a scriptures otherwise you are going to guess or you are going to look at the world's event to describe and to interpret the scriptures and both ways are take you off track and the wrong because your guess how how do you want to trust your opinion how do you want to trust the guess i believe this book is powerful enough written such a way because god knew one day rose is going to read it so he thought to put everything that i need to understand this book in this book so that's why i must find another scripture to understand this so where do we see a woman that is in labor so let's go to john chapter 16 so look at John chapter 16. I'm going to go to John with you guys as you find chapter 16. Okay. So John chapter 16, Jesus is talking about, it's about, he's about to be crucified. Okay. Do you see? He's about to be crucified. So now here, look at verse, um, 19 so he's talking about a little while i will be with you and a little while i will not and people are the disciples are confused like what is he talking about so verse 19 in john chapter 16 says now jesus knew that they desired to ask him and he said to him are you inquiring among yourself about what i said a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me so do you see some people are like what are you talking about a little while you will not see me and a little while you will see me okay so now jesus want, wants to help them to understand this right so he brings an example for them to understand it look at verse 20 it says most assuredly i say to you that you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. So again, Jesus, what are you talking about? So now here's the example. Jesus is really good in giving examples to help us understand what he's talking about. So look at verse 21. It says, a woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. Oh. Okay, wait a minute. Before we continue reading the rest of the verse, there's something called reading in the context, okay? So the verse before that, it says, guys, you are going to be in sorrow, all right? And then he gives an example of a woman that is in labor, who is in labor, is going to be, going to have sorrow. So guys, my disciples, those who are following my teaching, let me tell you, you're going to be like this woman that is going to go in labor. So did you see? He is talking to the disciples about the sorrow and he's talking about a woman to help them understand what does it mean, the woman that is in labor. Okay, so the time that you are in sorrow, like a woman that is in labor. All right, so verse 21, a woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, do you see? This is Revelation chapter 12, the woman that gave birth to a child. She no longer remembered the anguish for joy that a human being, cross it off, it's not a human being, a child. It's the same word that is used in Revelation. So a child has been born into the world. So therefore, it's important, therefore, you now have sorrow like the woman. So you like that woman that is in sorrow because you are giving birth to a child. Pay attention to this. And I'm just going to pray that the Lord just tear down the veil off of your eyes so you can see and hear what the spirit is saying through these scriptures to you it says but 
I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take away. Guys, the woman that is in sorrow, as soon as it gives birth, she's going to see the child and she forgets about the sorrow that she had. Why? Because she sees the child. So likewise, you will be like this woman, you will be on sorrow until you gave, give birth and you and I meet each other and see each other again, until you see me again. So what do we see here? It says, you know what? I will be that seed that you give birth to, the son. Oh. Guys, listen. I'm not talking about Jesus in the flesh. I'm talking about who he really is in the spirit that he reveals in Revelation chapter 1. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Word of God. He is the Word of God. Once he became flesh in a body of the Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. He's, he, he is our brother. He is the firstborn. We looked at him and we looked at his life and we realized how God in man lives. But now he says, I will be that seed again. Same way that I was a seed in a woman, Mary, and I was born and I did stuff and I became the savior. I become that seed inside of you. For a little while, you shall not see me because you are pregnant with the word of God. It's interesting. If I say you are pregnant with the word of God, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I say you're pregnant with Jesus Christ, oh, this is blasphemy. Guys, because we see Jesus Christ according to flesh. That's why we don't understand the spirit. That's why we don't understand the scriptures. Every time we say Jesus Christ, almost 99.99% of Christians think of Jesus of Nazareth that is written in the Gospels. And here's the thing, that's where we're stuck. That's where we must come to a place of seeing who he really is and how he manifested in the flesh. He, who he really is in the spirit and book of revelation reveals that to us. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I am the one who was dead and he is the true one. So now here's the thing. He's the word of God. So therefore, getting back to our woman's story here says, you know what? If you are listening to my words and you are my disciple, my word will fall into your heart and it's like you become pregnant with the word of God as soon as this word starts growing inside of you finds a strength in you it's like the son is born in you who's the son the word of God in the flesh is the son of God the word of God in the flesh is the son of God. So now when this word finds a strength in you, then it must come out of you. It must become flesh in you. It must show himself. It must be born from you, comes out of you. And this son, the word of God that came to maturity inside of you will be called the son of God, will be called that son that will even save you from, this, from the dragon. I don't have time to go and look at the uh, Luke, look at Luke, the gospel of Luke that Simon is prophesying over Jesus, baby Jesus at his you know, circumcision. And he says, to, to, to Mary that this son will be the sword that pierces even through your soul. And a few verses before that, it says he is destined for salvation. So this son that you just gave birth to Mary is going to be your salvation. So that's the story of us with God. So we are following Jesus. He's teaching us. 
the word of God. We are hearing the word. He is planting the word in our hearts, in our belly, in our womb. And now this word, we must keep it, nourish it, rejoice it. Maybe something like Mary did. Let it be done to me according to your word. She kept it as a treasure in her heart. And then she goes, and then this word starts finding a strength in us. And when it comes to the maturity, it becomes our food. It becomes our children. It becomes our child, which is going to save us. All right, so let me show you. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. And I am going to wrap up here after this. Revelation chapter 3. Let's look at uh, verse, uh, look at verse Actually, Revelation chapter 2, I'm sorry. This is uh, Jesus is writing the letter to the fourth church. And look at, before we go back and see what's going on, look at this. Verse 26. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over nations. Look at that. Verse 27. He shall rule them with a rod of iron oh okay this is exactly the same thing that revelation chapter 12 talked about he shall rule them with the rod of iron who the son that is born this letter is to the church church is the woman do you see this church is the woman he, it he, he needs to say she shall rule them with the rod of iron if the purpose is the church to rule them with the rod of iron. But here, the point says, no, he shall rule them. What is he saying? Okay, if you overcome, then he, the seed in you, as the male child, you're going to give that birth to rule them with the rod of iron. And they shall, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel. All right? As also I have received from my, my father. Did you see that? But let's go a few verses before that. Let's see, let's look at the context and surprisingly, you see another woman here. Look at verse 20. So Jesus writes them and he says, I know your works, your faith, your service and all the stuff. Look at verse 20. He says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Oh, okay. So there is a woman that is teaching stuff. Okay. So do you see? Teach. False prophetess that teaches my servants. Do you see? There is a teaching happening here. Verse 22. Indeed. I will cast her into the sickbed and those who have committed adultery with her into a great tribulation unless they repent of her deeds. My verse that I wanted to show you is verse 23. I will kill her children. Oh, okay. I will kill her children with death. All right. So this woman is teaching and now there is a child that is born. So do you see, apparently there is a false teacher, false teaching the word of lies that is now producing itself inside of the church, the woman. Producing itself, bringing forth children and says, you know what? I am going to kill the children. Oh my goodness, what are you talking about, Jesus? What child, what you produced out of the lies, what you produce out of the fleshly understanding of stuff, out of what you produced out of the false teaching that is far away from my words. Two seeds, lies and truth. One falls into your heart and burns fruit that eventually brings death to you. Another is a seed that falls in you and brings fruit that saves you. So now here it says, I will kill her children 
and all the church shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. Did you see where the children are? The children are, con are born in the minds and hearts of these people. They follow the church. So I am the one who searches the minds and hearts and I will give each one of you according to your words. I, why is he searching? He's searching to find the children. He's searching the minds, he's searching the hearts to find what is conceived, growth, grown, and is born in your mind and heart, which is according to the doctrine of Jezebel, the false teacher, the false prophetess. So why? It becomes your child when you give birth to what you believe. So now, going back to Revelation chapter 12, Therefore, if this woman, so after Jesus said to this church that I will search and I will kill your children, then he says, if you overcome, then I'm going to give you another child that is going to rule with the rod of iron. So do you see? So what was their overcoming? The overcoming was to be pregnant with the word of God to become pregnant with the word of God and not with the doctrine, the false doctrine. So here it says, going back to Revelation chapter 12. So you can see now who this woman is and why the dragon is chasing the woman because this woman is not going to go only bring forth one seed, is going to bring forth many seed, many child, many sons. And that's how the salvation for the woman is happening. That's how the woman can overcome everything. So now, so here's the thing. Therefore, Revelation chapter 12 is showing us how the word of God really works in your heart and mind. As soon as the word is conceived inside of you, you just need to hold it for a little while Believe it until the strength happens, until that word become your strength and that becomes your salvation. That becomes. And guess what? I don't have time to read chapter 12 and I really want to encourage you now with this understanding, go and read and every single verse is going to make sense now. And I want you to see what is saving you is the child that you give birth to, the word of God that becomes flesh in you, the word of God that is gets a strengthen in you, the word of God that rules with the rod of iron and you call him the son of God that saves you. And I want to show you one more verse. It keeps coming to me. I didn't want to go and read it, but I feel like I have because it keeps, I feel like the spirit is keep, keep, um, moving me toward that, that I need to show you this because it's so powerful. It is in Ecclesiastes, actually. And um, favorite, my favorite book is <laughs> so much, so much you can find Jesus there. Look at Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes <laughs> chapter 11. And that's the story of the growth of the Son of God inside of us. Look at verse 15. Chapter 11, verse 15, as you do not know what the way of the wind, as you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. Oh, isn't it wonderful? The as you do not know how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God. The work of God is that it's that bone that is growing inside of you. 
Isn't it wonderful, guys? Thank you so much for being with me today. And again, if you haven't subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel, I just want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, because we are continuing our study of the book of Revelation. It's all about Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, we will see you in the next teaching.